What's up? This is Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to manage a Firestore Cloud database quickly and easily using Kotlin coroutines. Before proceeding, please create a new Firebase project for Android. Let's enable Firestore through Android Studio. To do this, you can go to Tools, Firebase, scroll down to the bottom of the Assistant tab. There you'll see Firestore, click on that. Click Read and Write Documents from Cloud Firestore, and click Add Cloud Firestore to your app. If necessary, click Connect Your App to Firebase, then click Add Cloud Firestore to your app, which will add the appropriate Gradle dependency to your build Gradle file. Next, we will hop into the Firebase console and set up Firestore. We'll start it in test mode, which does not have any access restrictions on reads and writes, but obviously you'll want to avoid doing that for production builds. Once that process is done, we're ready to go. Firestore is schemeless, so we can start adding data without needing to configure things further. As discussed in a previous tutorial, number 10, where we built a room database, this application uses a repository to hide the details of the backend from the front end. How it works is that we first check Firebase auth to see if a user is in in this get active user function, and depending on what that result is, we either make our operations on the local room database or we perform operations on the Firestore remote database. Also note that I have created a specific data model for Firestore notes. The only difference here is that I store just the user ID in the Firestore note, whereas in the other note object, it stores a nested user object. This makes it easy to serialize and deserialize the data, and also keeps references to Firestore out of my repository interface. Finally, as usual, I encourage you to check out the source code in the description box, as this is an open source application. Let's take a look at the functions we will be implementing for Firestore. Get remote notes, we'll get all notes by a particular user. Get remote note, We'll get a particular note by a particular user. Delete remote note is pretty self-explanatory. And update remote note will be used to both create and update notes which already exist. Now, like I discussed in part 9 of this tutorial, I've created some quick and easy coroutine extension functions which wrap the calls to Firebase as you can see here. Please watch the tutorial for a detailed explanation. All of our calls to Firestore, and that's what this remote reference is here, will start with this collection function which accepts a collection path argument of type string. Instead of having rows and columns which represent different items in a database, Firestore has documents to represent individual items or models grouped into collections. So while it's important to remember that Firestore is not an SQL database, this collection path is similar to the name of a table in a database, if you happen to be familiar. Likewise, each document is in some sense similar to a row or entry in a database table. This app only has one collection, and it's just called Notes. As we'll see with all of these different functions here, we start everything by retrieving a collection, and then we'll add some other functions to start manipulating it. This call to the document function will either retrieve or create a reference to a document based on the path we give it. Now, in this case, the document path is a combination of the date at which the note was created, down to the second, combined with the UID of the Firebase user. This set function, which accepts an arbitrary data model, is how we actually populate our newly created document with the appropriate data. So in other words, what we're basically saying here is grab a reference to the notes collection, create a document with this particular key or name or path, and set the data at that path to be equal to the note which we passed in converted into a Firebase note object. In any case, all we do is call this function here, and if it succeeds properly, we will return unit, which basically just means, hey, this thing was successful. And if an error gets thrown in a way task completable, then our catch block here will gobble it up and we'll know that something went wrong. Delete is really easy. We just do exactly what we did before, except instead of saying dot set, we just call dot delete. The process for retrieving a specific note is also similar. In this case, we call the same thing, except in this case, we will call get at the end of our chained document request. Now, this will return a task object, which possesses a document snapshot. So what we do is we call this to object function to turn it into a Firebase. So what we do is we call this to object function here, which accepts some kind of data model, in this case Firebase note, which is what I used to upload originally with. And if we can successfully retrieve that, I just turn it back into a plain old note object, and then it's good to go. For get remote notes, which will return all notes for a given user, 
Again, we request a particular collection, and then we use this where equal to function, which accepts the name of the field in Firebase, and then we just pass in the user ID of the currently logged in user, and then we call this get function. Now, this particular task object will, of course, hold a list of document snapshots. So what we end up doing is I pass it into this function here, result to note list, and it just returns everything as a result wrapper containing a list of notes. That's just a basic mapping operation going on here. So that's actually all we need to do to set up Firestore. It is ready to go, and out of the box, it actually works both online and offline, which is pretty handy. If you found this tutorial helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below. Follow us on your preferred social media networks, and keep checking out the channel for more great content. Thank you for watching.